the smaller a baby is at birth, the more likely that baby is to develop ROP. When we say ROP, we mean retinopathy of prematurity. This is a kind of disorder which usually develops in both eyes of a premature child. It is one of the most common causes of visual loss in childhood and can lead to lifelong vision impairment and blindness. Hello and welcome to our show. I am Harsha Sinha with you. And today we are discussing on blinding eye disease in premature babies. ROP is more likely to occur because of early delivery which disrupts normal blood vessel growth. For further discussion on ROP, we have Dr. Shubhadra Jalali, who is a pioneer of ROP management in India and Asia and director at Newborn Eye Health Alliance, LV Prasad Eye Institute, Hyderabad. Welcome to our show, ma'am. So first of all, I would like to understand from you, what is ROP? So ROP, when we say it is a disease of premature babies, um, so some of you may know that the eye is like a camera and the retina is the back film of the eye. Now retina is something we can't see from outside. It is the film on which the whole process of vision and visual perception depends. So if the retina is destroyed, there is no cure at this point of time. So when this premature baby is born, its retina is not developed. From the outside, the eye looks that it is normal and it is seeing. But the retina actually develops only after 9 months of complete pregnancy. So if a baby is born at 7 months, 8 months, like 25 weeks, 26 weeks, 30 weeks, 34 weeks, its retina is not developed. So what happens is that this child who was in the protected environment of the mother's womb is now suddenly out in the environment. And this environment, although it is in the incubator, is very different from the environment in the mother's womb. So the eye gets a signal, the time is up, it's nine months, but actually the time is not up. And so the development of the retina goes haywire because the retina tries to develop very fast. And there are multiple factors which cause this disruption. But the final result is that the retinal development is not healthy. They are bleeding inside the eye, which is not visible from outside. And then within two, three months of birth, the retina detaches and there is complete blindness. So this whole process of this disease, which happens only in premature babies, is called ROP. And if I, if I you know, want to understand why are the babies premature, is it the carelessness of the mother or it is some kind of disorder? Why are the babies premature? Yeah, so you know, one way of preventing ROP is of course to prevent premature births. If there are no premature births, then there is no ROP. The other is premature babies dying. If premature baby die, there is no ROP. But obviously we don't want that situation. We want every baby to survive. So there are some uh, known reasons of premature births. The commonest is uh, poor maternal nutrition. The second is the low age uh, of mothers. Like you know in our country many girls get married very early in life, teenage pregnancies, 15 years, 16 years. So these babies are had a very high risk of developing premature. The more recent uh, cause of prematurity is the what we call as test tube babies, the assisted fertilization, the IVF babies. So these babies uh, not only will deliver prematurely, but they are also twins, triplets, quadruplets. So each baby is of very low birth weight. So low birth weight and prematurity are a double whammy to this baby. And the survival of these babies is highly risky. But with modern uh, care, incubators, good uh, programs of maternal and child health, we are now able to save these premature babies. Mm -hmm. um, so what the mothers can of course do is have a very good diet uh, and make sure that the mothers get good nutrition, they gain good weight and you know they are not too immature to even bear a child and they are not too elderly also. Elderly mothers also will develop uh, premature births. Then they are, uh, you know, unknown factors uh, because worldwide with increase in science, uh, the number of premature deliveries should actually decrease. Mm -hmm. But it is known that worldwide the premature births have increased and India has the largest number of premature births anywhere in the world. I mean, many a times it is uh, seen that, you know, even if the child is not premature, there is a vision uh the scarcity in the child. If we go to newborn uh, blinding disorders or newborn eye diseases, uh, there are two categories. One is in normal birth. So child was born normally, was not premature. So these children can have serious eye problems, the commonest of which is cataract. 
Now, congenital cat rat can be genetic, it runs in families, uh, but in India we also have a very high prevalence of rubella cat rat. Now, rubella happens because in our country we did not have a universal program for giving rubella vaccine that is the MMR vaccine to mothers. Uh, so, this rubella vaccine has to be given when the girls are teenage girls and only recently this MMR vaccine has been introduced in our country. So, if the mother gets rubella which is like a measles type of disease, if the mother gets rubella uh, when she is pregnant then the child can get uh, not only blinding cataract but also they will get mental retardation, heart problems. So, congenital rubella is a very important cause of blindness in our country and this can be completely stopped if we have a universal vaccination for uh, teenage girls. Okay, so vaccination is really important. Very important. And if we would like to understand what are its symptoms? What are, what are the symptoms of ROP? Is it uh, genetic if we could uh, you know, understand from you? Yeah, so ROP is not genetic although it has some genetic component. Uh, we have done research and others have done research that you know some abnormal genes does cause severe ROP but basically ROP is not congenital, it is not genetic. So, the first incubator in the world was set up in Boston in 1941 and the first ROP was detected in 1942 in Boston. So, it is very clear you know it is not an ancient disease, it is a completely uh, hospital acquired disease. Whenever you have babies who are premature and they are reared in incubators in artificial environment, they have a high risk of ROP. And then there are some risk factors in addition to prematurity. Uh, we know that mothers who have not received antenatal steroids. So, there is a program to protect against uh, lung disease and that also protects against eye disease is to give antenatal steroids to mothers, those who are at high risk of developing uh, premature births. So, these steroids have to be given in the second trimester that is after 6 months of pregnancy and this protects. So, the other thing is that you know if they are in the incubator what is happening to the oxygen. Now, we all know that you know oxygen is very much required for survival of these babies. If we do not give oxygen then the baby will die or they will get mental retardation. But if we give uncontrolled oxygen there is clear cut evidence that it causes very severe blindness. So, if the oxygen has to be given it has to be given mixed with air that is called blended oxygen. Now, these blenders are expensive and many hospitals may not use them correctly or you also need nursing staff. Mm -hmm. So, the nurses education is extremely critical to prevent ROP. If the nurses keep the oxygen at 9900 percent, there is a very high chance of ROP developing. Then oxygen has to be very regulated and monitored like a serious drug. It does, should not go beyond 90 percent of the pulse oximeter. So, every baby needs a pulse oximeter on their finger to monitor how much oxygen they are receiving. Now, sometimes there are no pulse oximeters or there are less pulse oximeters and so these babies get unnecessary oxygen and that is devastating to the eye. Okay, so is, is it available in India? The yes, oxygen, yes. Uh, the ROP management treatment, I mean ROP treatment is available in India or not? Yeah, so first is prevention. So, prevention as I said, uh, oxygen regulation. Then most important for prevention is also the feeding the baby. Mm. If the baby gains weight, even if it is premature but it gains weight faster, then ROP will be less. The prevalence will be less, the severity will be less. So, how do you make the baby gain weight? The best way is express breast milk. If you give every 2 hours express breast milk and now we have milk banks also in some of the places, mm -hmm. then these babies gain quick weight and then there are other feeding methods. So, if we can make the baby gain weight, then it will have less problems. The third thing very important is the sepsis. So, in our country infection rates are very high. Okay. So, again that requires you know hygiene, hand washing, uh, barrier nursing, not touching the baby, not allowing relatives to come near the baby to kiss it or mm -hmm. handle it. So, these babies do not have an immune system. They are highly at risk of developing infections. Okay. So, if we take off infection then also ROP reduces. Mm -hmm. So, these are preventive methods and we have seen that if these preventive methods are taken care of 80 to 90 percent of ROP goes away. Okay, so prevention is really important really for important. You know, ROP to get cured. Okay, if I could understand from you how ROP is diagnosed. Yeah. So, the um, critical thing about ROP is that there is no sign, there is nothing from outside the eye that can tell you that this baby has ROP. So, you know I always tell doctors and parents that if the child has some heart problem or digestion problem or lungs problem, it will show up. 
you will know child is not feeding or vomiting or is listless or it has become blue but see if i remove my glasses nobody can make out that i cannot see or i cannot you know have blurred vision i am having blurred vision child cannot express That's that correct. you know my vision is going blurred mm -hmm. so the only way to diagnose rop is what we call as teesh din roshni ke so teesh din roshni ke teesh din roshni ke okay and how what is it's it it's like you know do bun zindagi ke okay. everybody knows do bun zindagi ke ki, you know give polio drops and your legs and True. arms will be healthy True. so same way we are saying teesh din roshni ke get your baby's retina checked within 30 days of birth 30 days to vision so do bun zindagi ke for your legs and arms teesh din roshni ke for the critical vision so the only way to know about rop is to put dilating drops that is we put some drops in the eye and after 15 minutes examine the retina with an ophthalmoscope so this obviously has to be done by a specialist nowadays we also are having some cameras by which people can take a picture of the retina and send it across so this is the only way to diagnose rop once the child starts becoming blind due to rop then symptoms appear mm -hmm. then the child doesn't look at the mother's face or the eyes keep on shaking what we call as nystagmus or they start getting squinting bhang apan you know squinting eye or the mother notices that something white is happening to the eye so when she is feeding she will suddenly notice some white color from the eye white color from the eye is also a sign of eye cancer which happens in small babies uh, so so if you see something white in the eye don't ignore it we have heard from so many mothers you know i was feeding the child i noticed something white i told my family the child has something white in the eye the family said are you are very worried about your baby you know you are taking too much it. interest in your baby and they ignored it yeah. and then after 5 6 months they started noticing that you know child is not reaching out to objects it's not smiling so it could be cancer it could be cataract it could be rop definitely and by that time you notice it it's late mm -hmm. but many a times it is seen that you know i mean even at the age of 10 to 12 years there is a vision impairment in the child bahut jaldi unki aankhein kamzor ho jati hain so what is this how this can be cured okay so that's a different field uh, of um, you know childhood um, vision problem i think we should talk about it because this is something which is really becoming huge problem in most of the developed country if you go to taiwan to hong kong to singapore 60 to 80% of children who are 6 years old are wearing glasses you know so it's like it's a mushrooming of myopia in all these countries and it's now coming to our country so lot of research has gone in and very clearly it has been shown that village children don't get glasses yeah that's it's true it's the city children who get that's true glasses. I, mean, i mean why is it so because it has been seen that children who don't go out into natural environment at least 2 hours daily mm -hmm. from childhood till you know 8 10 12 years of age when the eye is growing they get so you know today when we are saying you know use computers use tablets i see all the mothers you know giving food to the child with a tablet in the hand with cartoons it's scary it's not that much of using these uh, gadgets mm -hmm. then not going out mm -hmm. so children who are read in apartments who are not exposed to outside outside doesn't mean malls outside means gardens, gardens sky the greenery trees Definitely. you know so so the colors i think the colors that nature has you cannot replicate them in your house mm -hmm. you know every day the color changes and the distance so in the house your distance is short mm -hmm. so you develop myopia short sight outside it is like you are seeing the sky you are seeing trees so it has clearly been shown that at least 2 to 3 hours of children being out of the house into a natural environment reduces their chance of getting myopia and if they have myopia which is like short sight glasses then the amount of power which increases also can be reduced okay so definitely there is a lifestyle change required uh, for small children to be out and these premature babies you know they are in the incubator we mm -hmm. don't take them out for months together because we are afraid of infection so almost all premature babies will get glasses almost okay. all of them and uh, how is the process you know i mean carried out if they you know wear the glasses The for premature babies? babies, yeah. Yes, babies. Uh, there are small frames, light frames, uh, for small babies uh, to wear glasses. Yeah, as and when we need. But if we manage them uh, early, then the need for glasses will be postponed. I would also like to understand from doctor what are the causes of risk factors of R O P. Okay. So the major risk factor is prematurity. Premature. Any okay. child who is less than thirty-five weeks. So you know, in our country, many mothers don't know their. Uh, gestational age in weeks so they don't know their last menstrual date uh, so the if the child is born before one month of due date 
that is the major risk factor any premature baby must have retina checkup done if they are in incubator that is the next risk factor the third is low birth weight any child who is less than 2 kgs and was preterm they are at high risk then i already told about oxygen if unregulated oxygen is given they can get rop but even babies who have never received oxygen can get rop if we don't know the due date of the mother and we think the child is premature so when we say when we say that you know the babies who didn't get you no know, oxygen so how how is the process carried out some babies don't need oxygen okay it's not that every child has lung problem only those premature babies who have lung issues they need oxygen so every preterm baby may not need oxygen mm -hmm. but initially in 40s 1940s 1950s people thought it is an oxygen induced disease okay then when they stopped oxygen they found that even babies who never received oxygen got the disease okay so oxygen only modifies the disease it worsens the disease but it's not the cause of the disease okay in most cases so basically we discuss the risk factors okay so many of the signs of retinopathy of prematurity happens deep inside the eye this can only be treated by an ophthalmologist a doctor who is trained to spot these signs using special instrument to examine your child's retina we have to discuss more on rop but on the other side of this short break Welcome back after the break. We are discussing blinding eye disease in premature babies. We are also discussing its causes and its risk factor. So we have the pioneer of ROP management in our studio who will help us understand what are the different stages of ROP. So fortunately for us the ROP doesn't come suddenly with the bang. It has a known natural history. So what happens is that at birth there is no ROP but retina is immature within 20 to 30 days the ROP starts and it starts with a mild disease called stage 1 and uh, in many babies the stage 1 just stays for some weeks and then it goes away so we just need to follow then it can go to stage 2 which is where our red flag is raised that okay stage 2 we have to watch it and there is something called stage 2 plus if there is 2 plus or 3 3 plus then we have to treat so there are various very good randomized control trials which have been done uh, there is a good scientific evidence that the risk of blindness is between 50 to 80% if it is not treated in stage 2 and 3 so that is the best stage to treat 2 plus and 3 plus if we can treat in those stages then we have almost 95% cure rate and child will have good vision and will go to normal school they'll not be blind they'll not even have very low vision and then stage 4 is where the retina starts detaching now this is a very dangerous state stage 4a 4a means we have to operate that i undergo major surgery within 1 to 2 days of birth if we can do that we can still save the eye it's like a fire you know fire starts and there's a period critical period where you put out that fire and the building will stand okay. if you miss that boat the building will come down so after 4a 4b is like okay we can sometimes treat it but they will be left with significant uh, vision loss okay. stage 5 is blinding okay so one question which is you know hitting me hard that it needs a, i mean you know very strong convincing power uh, for you know parents to you know believe that you know their child has you know rop uh, disease so how uh, in your you know practice how have you faced this yeah this has been a major problem because um, we've had we've done some studies to find out why children became blind and almost in 30% of cases we found that the parents did not understand the seriousness of problem in 50% cases they were not told about it and in few cases they were told but they didn't understand so what happens is see the the parent doesn't know there's something called retina Definitely. okay from yeah. outside the eye looks normal if you switch on the light the child will close its eyes so it looks like everything is nice mm. so you know there's a lot of myth especially in media you know doctors are doing unnecessary tests 
doctors are referring unnecessarily doctors are doing some research on my baby's eyes so the parents have said to us that you know we never heard it in the media हमने टीवी पे नहीं सुना कि भाई आरोपी होता है हमने ये सुना कि पोलियो के ड्रॉप दे दो हमने ये सुना कि टीका लगा दो आरोपी के तो हमने कुछ सुना नहीं there is a gap between what the doctors know what is in our books and journals so and what the public so it needs a proper knows. you know counseling yes. as well right yes. so the counseling starts with the neonatologist okay and the neonatal nurses so mm -hmm. that is what you know we have been working with the national neonatology forum of india mm -hmm. and many uh, these children specialists and it's the child specialist who is taking care of that baby okay. and the parents have full trust in the child specialist because he has saved the life of that baby who was going to die so so it's the pediatrician or the neonatologist child care specialist the nurse there mm -hmm. who has to inform the parents like after one or two weeks of birth that your baby will need eye checkup okay. and it always helps if outside the waiting hall because these parents wait in that area for days together so you know outside the waiting hall you put up big posters like you know there are breastfeeding posters there there are vaccination posters there so we encourage that put you know i care posters there that you know there is something called rop mm -hmm. so we have made lot of posters in english hindi odia telugu so these can be put up so it needs a, you know proper awareness yes so once the awareness is there once the parents understand then they go out of their way so once they understand that you know my child can go blind mm -hmm. then they rush through every day i get you know sms whatsapp emails you know my child has rop you know we are coming to hyderabad but everybody doesn't need to come to hyderabad we have more than 300 doctors who have been trained mm -hmm. all over the country and in various places who can handle rop very well mm -hmm. so only very advanced cases may need to go to big centers but the awareness once awareness is there the parents find the way Uh, how to get the doctor so okay. if the baby is still sick it's not out of the incubator then the eye specialist should be brought to the hospital and they should examine the baby in the incubator itself and we can treat the baby in the okay. incubator itself so that the teeth then roshni is very critical okay so awareness and proper knowledge is also important yes. for parents to understand this yes. disease yes okay i would also like to understand is rop completely curable how it can be prevented so prevention i think we talked about it by mm -hmm. reducing the risk factors but treatment is very critical so once you diagnose that you know this is a what we call as vision threatening rop that is stage 2 or 3 plus or more then the treatment has to be carried out within 24 to 48 hours usually we don't wait more than 24 hours so there are two types of treatments currently the standard of care the treatment which is very well known is laser treatment so lasers you know just like you have laser shows um in parks and all laser shows so it's okay. the laser beam same same type of laser beam which we focus into the baby's eye mm -hmm. and uh, the laser spots what they do is that they stop this bleeding inside the eye and stop the retina from detaching now laser treatment is a very skilled treatment it requires a trained person uh, treatment takes 2 to 3 hours um, the rop screening that is the diagnosis of rop takes only 5 minutes or 10 minutes it's not Uh, long uh, treatment but the treatment requires baby to be in the hospital for 3 4 hours under care and we can treat them in many countries they give complete anesthesia to the baby which is little risky in our country we are treating under topical anesthesia so that's less risky but uh, there is a need to treat properly with proper um, training by the doctor who's been trained to treat babies it's not uh, something easy if i could uh, also understand from you that uh, how many genuine centers are there in delhi for rop treatment many of them okay yes the, there are many of them all in institute is the leader mm -hmm. dr professor azad uh, started rop management in uh, niku of uh, all in institute of medical sciences way back in 1989 90 so almost 25 to 30 years they have experienced there and now most of the hospitals have uh, rop trained people okay. uh, to treat M multiple centers center for sight is there uh, sardaning hospital um, venu eye institute so many hospitals i mean i don't think there's a dearth of doctors doing rop screening and treatment the important thing is the uh, coordination and the liaison and the trust between the doctor the pediatric doctor mm -hmm. the eye specialist and the parent parent is really if important if they team up so that is then the baby will not fall through. definitely that can if act as a chain if one of them forgets definitely the pediatrician forgets to tell or the you know the ophthalmologist is not there he is on leave or something or doesn't take the phone call or the parent decides that okay after diwali we'll go you know mm -hmm. it's a festival season abhi diwali 
एंड ऑल्सो द ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स समटाइम द ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स से क्यों लेके जा रहे हो तो अननेसरी टेस्ट कर रहे हो अभी बच्चा छोटा है जब बड़ा हो जाएगा तब लेके जाएंगे बेसिकली नॉलेज इशू है या सो सो दैट द टीम एंड दैट अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट द टाइम इज क्रिटिकल एंड ट्रीटमेंट इज देयर एंड ट्रीटमेंट हैज 90% सक्सेस सो बिसाइड्स लेजर वी आर आल्सो नाउ हैविंग अ न्यूअर ट्रीटमेंट व्हिच इज स्टिल नॉट अप्रूव्ड फॉर यूज आर सम इंजेक्शंस इन द आई सो दीस इंजेक्शंस इन द आई आर बीइंग नाउ ट्राइड इन मेनी प्लेसेस वेयर देयर इज नो लेजर or you know doctor is not trained for laser although we don't know the long term side effects of these drugs but yes uh, these this is an upcoming treatment uh, it's still being evaluated worldwide uh, but yes the injection treatment is also coming up but we have to be cautious because it's a new treatment uh, the drug goes into the body mm-hmm. we still don't know whether it will cause some long term or short term okay. damage to the developing organs of the newborn baby so i think we have to be cautious but uh, it is something that is coming up so proper uh, treatment and you know handling is also very yes. important and then the follow up is very critical follow-up. because it's not like one time treatment it's not like we've given the treatment or we've examined no everything is fine we have to follow this child till it's at least 3 6 months old okay. and we come to the conclusion that yes the disease has gone completely it's not smoldering behind mm-hmm. and if we give injection treatment it smolders longer mm-hmm. so if we give injection treatment child has to be followed up very closely every month for at least one or two years mm-hmm. if we give laser treatment it works within 2 3 months and then we don't need to be that critical for follow up mm-hmm. but any patient child who has had rop they need long term treatment because later they will need glasses definitely they may need some surgery so observation and you know surveillance is yes, really yes. so that very is very important. important that parents should come back for follow up mm-hmm. so even sometimes they are not able to come back to the treating doctor they can be followed up by the local eye specialist definitely so proper uh, knowledge and uh, surveillance as well as observation is also very important yes, yes okay does the treatment leads to any complication what is the treatment success rate yeah so i think there is no treatment in the world which doesn't have side effects yeah and uh, we have to balance the risk and benefits uh, so laser treatment as i said has 90 to 95% success rate if it is done very early and correctly um the only side effect mainly for, from laser is the need for glasses need so, for glasses yes so as i said that premature babies anyway need glasses almost all premature babies need glasses when we do laser the power of glasses can be higher mm-hmm. you know so yes almost all babies who have been treated can we with not lasers, treat it uh, with the help of medicine is it necessary to you know i mean let the baby go with the glasses as of now there is no good medicine okay for rop except as i said uh, reducing the risk factors mm-hmm. if we are able to reduce the risk factors then the need for laser and the amount of laser becomes less so then the side effects are less but you see when we are doing laser and we are saying the child needs glasses what we have to understand is that if we don't treat then he will be blind or that baby will be blind so that is very critical it's like you know there's a fire why should i put water on the building because my carpet will become bad you know at that time you don't save the carpet you save the building definitely you know yeah. so same way i think the parents have to understand that babies may need glasses but with the glasses they will go to school they'll be normal they can drive and then of course we know that glass removal surgeries are available after 20 21 years of age the lasik surgery so that can be considered or contact lenses so those are you know things which we can handle but if they get blind there is no cure mm-hmm. you know so yes there is some um, price to pay for uh, saving the eye of the newborn baby mm-hmm. and uh, everybody has to understand that and if a premature baby you know gets a glass then what is the uh, time period that the glass would re- be removed as i so said like mm- you said you know it's 20 to 21 years yes so is it like that that he has to carry the uh, uh, lenses till 21 year of age almost yeah but there are children who are good at contact lenses okay usually after school um, we can encourage them to wear contact lens if they want to wear so many film stars are wearing contact lens so many sports heroes are wearing contact lens nowadays so that's something which uh, many people wear um i'm wearing glasses here <laughs> yeah, definitely ma'am okay so i would also like to understand from doctor are there any side effects of these treatments such as uh, surgery on infants um so surgery on infants the main risk i won't say side effect but main risk is of anesthesia anesthesia so yes these babies if we have to do surgery mm-hmm. like operation for stage 4a 4b uh, which is done at a very young age uh, then it has a risk of anesthesia now that risk of anesthesia um, is low if you have very good setup 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we are very proud to say that at El Prasada Institute, we are one of the first centers in the country to have our own neonatal intensive care unit in the hospital itself, in the eye hospital itself. So we have a very well trained t- team of neonatal anesthesiologists who are today anesthetizing babies less than 1000 grams. Okay. And there are other hospitals also, okay. which are you know doing that, uh, but that requires a lot of investment mm-hmm. uh, into human resource, training the nurses, how to handle these small babies, anesthetists and uh, surgeons. And it has to be like you no know, skilled surgeons who can do the surgery fast, because we don't want to anesthetize the baby for a long time. Um, so, but, but the track record is good in most of the places the babies do well, mm-hmm. uh, we didn't have serious mortality mm-hmm. um, and uh, some of the babies need to go back on ventilator or to the neonatal center after surgery which is the risk of anesthesia uh, but otherwise uh, even with surgery in stage 4a most of the cases do well. Okay, so we discussed about anesthesia. I would also like to understand from doctor what are the precautions women must take while pregnancy to avoid ROP in her premature baby? Yeah, we um, said that the risk factor main is the mother's nutrition and age. Okay, so nutrition she, is really important. Nutrition, yeah, and especially if you are having, uh, you know, the first pregnancy and also if you have had what is called as assisted fertilization, mm-hmm. that you had, you know, tablets to um, get a baby or you use test tube methods which we call as IVF or uh, IC, whatever different methods of uh, um, getting a baby, if any assisted fertilization methods were used, then otherwise also your nutrition is very important. Don't try to get pregnant when you are 15, 16, 17 year old. Okay, try yes. to be at least beyond the legal age which is also 18. Uh, there is a reason why it is beyond 18 that you know young mothers who are, um, don't get your girls married very early That's because true. if they become pregnant and they are not well nourished, you know, we say beti bachao, beti padhao. So we want that our girls, women should be well fed. You know, many times they get only the last piece of food in the house. Uh, you know, the men will be given the big meat and the girl will be given just the curry. That's so true. please feed your girls well because they are going to give birth to your next generation. And your, uh, you know, baby is going to be of more weight if the mother's weight was good. And then of course, good antenatal care. Now we have Janani Suraksha Yojana, very good program of hospital care, antenatal care, the ASHA workers. Um, so be with them, take the antenatal care, uh, use the iron tablets that are given. So a good antenatal care reduces by half okay. the risk of ROP. Okay. And then we said that, you know, after delivery, know about your baby, know about premature birth, mm-hmm. understand what are the risks. It's not only about the eyes. They also have other risks of, you know, speech problems, hearing problems, they can have feeding problems, they can have cerebral palsy, they can have autism. So there are multiple issues in a premature baby. I am only talking of the eyes, uh, but the eyes in the whole body. And obviously, you know, sometimes when I do laser, the parents ask, uh, okay, doctor, you have cured the eyes. Will my baby be normal and will it go to normal school? I tell them that, you know, eyes only the camera. Ultimately, the visual performance depends on the mind, on Definitely. the cognition. Okay, so in a in a nutshell, we have to you know take care of uh, the Adi Abadi, and we have also you know take care of uh, Tizdin Roshni ke as well. Okay, so retinopathy of prematurity makes blood vessels grow abnormally and randomly in the eye. In today's show, we discussed about ROP symptoms, risk factors, different types of ROP surgery and various treatment options available across the world. Thank you, Dr. Jalali, for sharing valuable information with our viewers. We are really very privileged to have you in our studio. Thank you so much. So that's all for today. We'll be back with many more. Please write to us and let us know your suggestions on feedback at indiascience.in. Till we come back, good day.